Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how we form, pour, and finish a concrete slab. I'm going to give you everything. We're going to put up the forms. I'm going to show you how we do that, how we tie in the reinforcement, which I'm using a rebar today, and then how we pour the concrete, screed it, bull float it, and then the type of finish we're going to put on it is a broom finish. That'll be towards the end of the video, so stick around for that. Basically what I'm doing is I'm using two by sixes. This is about a five and a half to six inch slab and These people we're working for today. They're gonna just build some type of structure on it and then they're gonna use it for storage They just wanted We're gonna follow the edge of that driveway too. We're gonna be about a foot and a half off the edge and they're gonna pave right up to the slab so they didn't want this like a perfect square it didn't really need to be Squared up it just they wanted me to go right by those stakes you see in the corners So somebody came in laid out those stakes. They actually put the grade marks right on the stakes for me. I Just needed to form up to that so it was about a it was about 20 feet wide and right around 24 to 30 feet long depending on which edge you was matching So what I did was I just laid out my two by sixes the lengths a little bit longer than I needed on each side and I screwed them together and now I'm just getting them set up so I set them up and then I I measure out my corners to the lengths that they told me marked them with a pencil and then I can screw all my corners together I use I use deck screws two and a half inch deck screws with a with a Milwaukee drill driver and I'll have links for those down in the description all the tools you'll see me will be down there if you guys want to check them out and use some of the stuff I do now when I get that screwed, all the corners screwed together, the next thing I do is I run my string. I just screw a, a screw right into the top of the form. And you can go with the inside of the form if you want. You could go with the outside or you could go with the middle. As long as you have something to go by to keep that form straight when you're pounding in your stakes. We use these, we use these metal stakes. They got holes through them. They pound in, you know, good hard compacted gravel really easy. A lot easier than wooden ones do. And we just use them over and over and over again. I've had them for years. They got 18 inch long ones, 24 inch, 36 inch, just about any length you want. You can get those right on Amazon or you could get them at, I think they have them at Home Depot. I get them at my local supply company. But now what I do is once I got my forms all staked in place, I'll set my laser up. And I... I wanted to make sure I showed you guys just how I set my laser up. It's pretty simple. This is the Topcon RLH5B, so it's a self-leveling laser. So all I need to do is get the legs like that, get them fairly level, and then just set my laser on top and hit the on button. Now I'm screwing that corner right to the grade that's on that wooden stake there that they gave me. And then it takes a few seconds for the laser to self-level and then it'll start spinning the laser beam around so now I have a nice level laser beam to go by and I just use that receiver on the stick to find that laser beam and when I do I got a I got a ruler on that stick so I got numbers to go by so let's say the number right there I found was 12 and then I'm going over here to find the number on my grade stick according to where that laser beam is setting because it all slopes down towards me down towards that corner so if, I, if the number I find over here is say 8 I know I got about a 4 inch difference from corner to corner so I just want to split the difference I'll move my receiver to 10 and I'll set that middle right there then I'll have a nice even slope from one corner to the other they wanted to make sure that if water got on this pad that it would run off, kind of like the driveway. So that's what I did. That's how I set all my corners and my middles was I just used their marks on their stakes for the corners and then I split the difference between each one and set the middles for each side. Now I'm just laying the rebar in. I got number four rebar. It's half inch rebar. We're putting it 12 inches on center. So I went around and I marked my 12 inches and I sprayed them with that, that little can of orange spray paint you see right there. I sprayed marks in the dirt to go by and that helped me just get everything laid out nice and neat. I had to cut these ones when I, when I came up to this kind of like this angled corner 
And I just use a little cutoff tool, uh, that Milwaukee grinder with a little cutoff blade on it to cut the rebar. It was enough for today. I got a big saw, but I didn't need it. And then Luke and Darren were tying the rebar together with the wire ties. And now Luke is just putting in some slab bolsters under the rebar to get it up off the off the bottom. And that's that's how we'll pour it right there up about two inches up off the ground. So after we got it all set up, we called for concrete. We're using a 4,000 PSI concrete with a water reducer in it. And the water reducer in the concrete allows us to pour a little bit looser slump like a, between a six, six and a half or so, when without the water reducer in it, it would come out of the truck around a three. So it goes from a three to about a six, six and a half slump just by adding a few ounces of that water reducer per yard. I think we got about 15 or 16 yards we're pouring here, so about seven, seven and a half yards per truck. And we'll get that first truck dumped right out. I got a couple of metal pins in the middle that we're going by and that's what we're, we're making our pads with in the middle so there's a metal stake in there with a nail through it right at the height we need to be at and then we just mag float the concrete around that and pull it out and that gives us our grade in the middle and that's what Luke is using there the guy kind of on the right he's using that wet pad to go by and Darren's using the top of the form there on the other side. So we'll get that pad struck, and that's what we use to level the slab with. We've got a long enough screed board so both guys can get right on the outside of the pads, and then my job is just to make sure I, I keep the concrete so it doesn't get low, and then if it gets too high, I just want to pull it down a little bit so we're not pulling back too much. They always want to be pulling back a little bit. make sure there's no dips in the, in the slab and Luke is making sure the guy in the middle there is making sure when he when he screeds you know these guys go about six or eight inches with each stroke when he screeds in the middle he's just making contact with the slab every single time and you can see that by looking at the outside of that screed you can tell if you're making contact or not A raker's job, you can see how important it is to have a raker. There's always something to pull back or something to fill in. It's never really perfect. So the raker guy is really important and it helps speed up the process a lot. So once we get the concrete all screeded, then we'll just run the bull float over it, smooth it out, pushes down the aggregate, brings up some of the, the paste and the cream to the surface and just makes the whole job a lot easier to finish here in about an hour or two. And the bull float, you know, you just push it across, make sure the front edge is tipped up, and when you pull it back, you make sure the back edge is tipped up. And it's pretty much almost as simple as that, just go nice and slow. You now the second truck is sit was sitting there waiting, so he got all mixed up and ready to go. And then we'll just dump him out. And this is basically, you know, how when we pour slabs, we dump most of the truck out at one time because we know how much we can we can get down and screed pretty fast. If you can't if you can't screed as fast as us, or if you're not as experienced as us, then you don't need to dump out this much at one time. You could you could dump out half this much. You know, you can see Darren magging the center pad to that that stake we had. There's a double-headed nail through that stake that we set right to grade by using some strings. And then when he gets his pad where he wants it, he pulls it out, puts a little X there, circles it, and that tells everybody else that that's right on grade and not to walk through it. So then we'll get our edges all mag floated nice and smooth, and that's what we're going to go by when we screed to the outside. So we just continue the process. We call these little bays, so there's one bay, they just screeded right there, and we'll do each bay at a time. Take it one bay at a time, and before you know it, you're done. Now we screed, we screed what we call kick screed, and so when I, when I screed, when I pull the screed up, I kick and replace my foot, 
Now, that takes a little bit to learn. If you don't, you don't need to do it that way if you've never done it. You could just pull the board two, three, four times, set back, fill your feet, pull the board two, three, four times, set back. You know, you could do it that way too. You'd get it done just about as efficient as us, just maybe not as quick as us. The leveling process, you can see, is pretty important. We want to make sure, that especially with this one, it all slopes kind of to that one corner that they're finishing up in. So not, none of this slab was really flat, but it was, it was basically just like pouring a flat slab. And then the bull folding process, you can see, is you go over it and over it. Sometimes just going over it once is good enough. Sometimes you got to go over it twice. Clean up your edges with the bull float. And then the finishing process starts, you know. And sometimes it could start, like, right after you're done. Sometimes you may have to wait 30 minutes. Sometimes you may have to wait an hour. It all depends on the temperature outside kind of what you're doing for finish it was as you can see the guys are wearing sweatshirts today it was it was in the 60s it was cloudy so this wasn't drying too fast on us we waited probably 45 minutes before we started doing these edges Luke's just running an edger around the, the slab and he's rounding off those edges just helps make the edges a little stronger they're less likely to chip that way so he'll go around and he'll cut in the edge the initial time and then after we do the final finish we'll go around and put the finished edge on so it's firm enough now to get on with some knee pads some we call these skids or knee boards and they just help you glide across the surface so you can mag float out the surface when you get ready to do uh, we're gonna do a broom finish on this so we'll mag float it out get all the bull float lines out fill in anything we need to fill that the bull float didn't get get the surface to a pretty smooth finish with some nice paste on the surface and then we can broom that now you it depends on how hard or soft the concrete is this was pretty firm we let it firm up pretty good so we only needed to go over it once before we broom it but you could do an initial float like this then you could let it sit for 30 40 minutes come back and go over it again with a with a hand float or a hand trowel depending on you know where you are we don't typically hand trial or steel trial our surface before we broom up here in Maine because we go through so many freeze and thaw cycles that sometimes if you steel trial the surface up here it'll it'll trap some moisture under the surface because it seals off the surface even though you're running a broom over it it still seals off the surface a little bit and we have air entrainment in our concrete too and the air entrainment really helps protect the concrete from freeze and thaw and scaling so it could also trap in some air under the surface which would create a, like a, a blister or a bubble later on down the road that sometimes you don't even notice it and that just increases the chances of it scaling so most of the time we'll just mag float it and if we need to we'll mag float it twice in the second time is usually really tight just almost like a steel trowel but the mag float doesn't tend to seal off the surface so we had enough handle on the broom where we could just run it all the way across on this one set it down and just pull the broom and give it a nice light broom finish texture now if you want to learn how to do slabs like this I have my private training down in the in the description of the video below so if you're on a if you're on a desktop, you know, you there's a show more tab. If you're on a cell, a cell phone, there's just a little drop down arrow over on the right down below the video that you hit. And that brings up all the description and the notes of the video. And down in there, I have the, my concrete underground training. And I also have a, a separate concrete slab course down there too. And it, it, it trains you how to do a concrete slab just the way we do. And there's all kinds of different trainings in there showing you all the different methods that we use to do concrete slabs so if you're looking to do your own if you're looking to learn then check both those out and figure out which one's best for you they're both really good so once we get the finished broom on it Luke's gonna go around and put the finished edge on he's uh, he's doing a couple sides and I'm doing a couple sides 
And then what we'll do is we'll let this dry up and we'll come back and we'll saw our expansion joints one down the middle each way and that then we'll strip the forms and that'll be it for the slab. So that's it guys. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.